somewhere around Market Square on the edge of the old city when the drugs began to take hold. I remember saying something like, I feel a bit cornbreaded, maybe you should drive. And suddenly there was a terrible orange all around us, and the sky was full of what looked like huge football fans, all hooting and hollering and dancing to the Tennessee waltz around our car, which was going about 100 miles an hour with the top down to Knox, Vegas. And a voice was screaming, Holy Philip Fulmer, what are all these goddamn Vols fans? Then it was quiet again. My attorney had taken his Peyton Manning jersey off and was pouring craft beer from one of the numerous and oversaturated microbreweries in town all over his chest to facilitate the hillbillying process. What the hell are you yelling about? He muttered, staring up at the sun's sphere with his eyes closed and covered with a wraparound Dollywood sunglasses. Never mind, I said. It's your turn to drive. I hit the brakes and aimed the big orange hound dog toward the shoulder of Asheville Highway. No point in mentioning the Vols fans, I thought. The poor bastard will see them soon enough. It was almost noon, and we still had more than a hundred miles. Very soon, I knew we would both be completely twisted. But there was no going back, and no time to see Rock City. We would have to ride it out. Press registration for the Haslam 5K for some shit was already underway, and we had to get there by 420 to claim our Rocky Top Proof Suite. A fading local news rag in Knoxville had taken care of the reservations, along with this huge orange Rusty Wallace Honda convertible we just rented off the lot on the Alcoa Highway Auto Strip. And I was, after all, a professional journalist, so I had an obligation to cover the story, go to real. The birdcage liners had also given me $300 in cash, most of which was already spent on extremely dangerous trinkets from the tourist trap on Gay Street. The trunk of the car looked like a mobile flea market of Tim Burgett bobbleheads and my blood runs big orange bumper stickers. We had two bags of barbecue pork rinds, 75 WDVX koozies, five copies of the Heartland series on DVD, a salt shaker full of Calhoun's dry rub, and a galaxy of orange-colored uppers, downers, screamers, laughers, also a quart of Sugarland moonshine, a quart of Mountain Dew, a case of Sawmill IPA, a pint of Scruffy City Liger, and a meth rock. All this had been rounded up the night before at a frenzy of high-speed driving all over Knox County. From Montgomery Village to Farragut, we picked up everything we could get our hands on. Not that we needed all that for the trip, but once you get hooked into a serious small-town junk collection, the tendency is to push it as far as you can. The only thing that really worried me was the meth rock. No, wait, I take that back. The only thing that really worried me was the barbecue pork rinds. There's really nothing in the world more helpless and irresponsible and depraved than a man in the depths of barbecue pork rind binge. And I knew we'd get into that rotten stuff pretty soon. Probably at the next pilot gas station. We had sampled almost everything else, and now, yes, it was time for a long snort of Calhoun's dry rub. And then through the next hundred miles in a horrible, slobbering sort of good old boy stupor. The only way to keep alert on barbecue pork rinds is to do up a lot of dry rub. Not all at once, but steadily, just enough to maintain a focus of 90 miles an hour through Bearden Hill. Man, this is the way to travel, said my attorney. He leaned over to turn up the volume on the radio, humming along with the rhythm section, kind of moaning the words. Rocky Top, you'll always be home sweet home to me. Sweet home, you poor fool. Where do you see those goddamn ball fans? I could barely hear the radio. Slumped over the far side of the seat, grappling with a tape recorder turned all the way up on Sympathy for the Devil. That was the only tape we had, so we played it constantly, over and over. It was kind of a demented counterpart to the radio, but also to maintain our rhythm to the road. A constant speed is good for gas mileage, and for some reason that seemed important at the time. Indeed, on a trip through Tennessee, one must be careful about gas gouging. My attorney saw the hitchhiker long before I did. Let's give this good old boy a lift, he said, and before I could mount an argument, he was stopped and this poor hick kid was running up to the car with a big grin on his face saying, Hot damn, I've never rode in a Rusty Wallace before. Is that right, I said. Well, I guess you're about ready then, eh? We're your friends, said my attorney. We're not like the others. Oh, Johnny Majors, I thought. He's gone around the forks of the river. No more of that talk, I said sharply, or I'll put the Lady Vols on you. Get in. Luckily, the noise in the car was so awful, between the wind, the radio, and the balls fans, that the kid in the back seat couldn't hear a word we were saying. Or could he? 